everyone, Eva Thompson here. Hi, this is Sean. And today we are going to be talking about what to do when you get triggered. So what you do when the intuitive thoughts come in and the mental movies come in. It's important to note, just before we get into it, that we are going to be giving you ways to cope. But we don't believe in just using coping mechanisms to get better. So it's important to use these techniques while you are actively trying to get to the root cause and eliminate RJ altogether. So we're going to be giving you ways to handle the intrusive thoughts so they stop coming up as much, but you really will benefit if you look into the root cause. So what the root cause is and how you can figure it out is looking at the emotion that comes up for you when you get triggered. So is it anger? Is it disgust? Is it sadness? Is it frustration? And look at why you feel that way. Where are those emotions, those strong emotions coming from? Because what happens is we get an intrusive thought and then the emotional reaction is what fuels the thought. It's what makes it come back over and over again. So please, whether it's through therapy, if you want to book a call with us, you can, a free consultation call. Um, we really believe in looking at the root cause. Like, why is this a problem for mm. you? Or it causes. Was, it could be multiple causes. Yeah, it's, yeah, a lot of the time it is layered. But yes, guys, that's just what we wanted to point out quickly before we actually jump into the video. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the um, first and best thing to do is is to start focusing on your breathing focusing on your breathing is is something where uh that gives you um the ability to slow your body down um to to breathe easy to think clearer if you really start to listen to the way you're breathing it does this thing where it puts your body into a parasympathetic state so it, it calms your body down naturally and it's something that you can do more and more often what happens when you panic is you tend to hyperventilate and breathe heavy, fast. Um, but when you're breathing calmer and you're listening to the sound of your breath, your body slows down, your mind slows down, and you, you go away from the fight or flight and you go into this nice, calm state. It's hard to do uh, initially, but it does take practice. So breathing to expand your awareness, to slow down or even stop the fight or flight is, is something you can do. So watch until the end because I'll be showing you uh, an exercise that you can do um, in order to calm your body down within a couple of minutes, okay? It, it's called the learning state. Yeah. And also what happens is when you panic, when the thoughts come in, you tend to get anxious maybe or whatever the emotion is and you really fixate on the thoughts and nothing. Like you can't concentrate on anything else. And by breathing, with a technique that Sean is going to show you, you really want to practice expanding your awareness. You know, I've talked in other videos about your five senses, so bringing yourself back to reality. Um, what can you taste? What can you smell? What can you see? What can you hear? Really try to bring yourself back to reality, back to what is right now. So that's the first thing, guys, is breathing. It's very important. The second thing that really helps eliminate intrusive thoughts is not being afraid of them. So by fearing the thoughts or dreading the thoughts, you are automatically sending a signal to your brain that these thoughts are important enough to be feared, that they are a real threat when they are not. Are they pleasant to think about? No. Even if you didn't have RJ, it's not going to be nice to think about your partner with anybody else, okay? But does it mean that you need to fear them or dread them with su such intense like intensity, I guess? No. And that's what happens is when you feel intense emotions like fear or dread towards the thoughts, you are sending a signal to your brain that these thoughts are important enough that they are a real threat. So by saying things to yourself like, I am safe, this is just a thought, it's not a real threat, that also can help you basically send the signal to your brain that you know what this these are not pleasant thoughts but i'm not gonna freak out when they come to my mind and feel you know like that i have no control over my mind because that's not the case it's just a thought like you think of millions of things every day that you don't feel are a threat these are just thoughts they're not pleasant i'm not saying enjoy the thoughts 
but realize they're not a real threat. They don't need to bring up such fear and such dread mm. when you think of them. Yeah. Um, I think there's, there's a clear difference between um, anxiety and fear. Fear, genuine fear, is when you are in clear and present danger. So if you see a snake and you don't know what kind of snake it is, you know, you don't know if you're going to get bitten by that snake and you literally just stumbled across it. That is fear. Anxiety comes from um, indecision or pro procrastination or not doing something about um, a problem that you have. Now, we only genuinely fear or get anxious around things that we don't understand. So it is important, yes, like Eva says, to uh, say the words that uh, this is not a real threat, uh, it's just a thought, I am safe. But what we do um, through our, our training and, and, and everything on the courses that we do with people is that we, we teach you to understand uh, the problems or the root causes. So when you fear something genuinely, um, it's because you don't understand it. So think of a, if you've ever watched like uh, The Crocodile Hunter or anything like that, you've got these guys that are really, really brave, probably doing really questionable things, but they're going around catching crocodiles or catching snakes and removing them from dangerous uh, areas that are, that, where people are, are at risk. How are they able to do that? They understand the characteristics of these snakes and crocodiles. They know their behavior and they're able to control their own fear and do what they need to do in order to capture these animals and move them to a safer place. And it's the same with, um, you know, any emotion, thought, feeling, right? You can let them get the better of you because you don't understand them. But if you go to them in such a way that you, you, you purposefully take control of your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, you choose to understand them and will teach you how to do that, then you're less anxious and less fearful as a result. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, and like you said before, it's sort of like a healthy respect for how your brain works. You yes. know what I mean? Like through therapy and through introspection, you will figure out what's at the root of these emotions. And then you can focus on that, on what is causing this, which is within you. Because right now, logically and consciously, your mind is telling you that the past is a threat. That's the problem. That's, you know, that's what the problem is. If only that didn't happen, then you wouldn't feel this way. No, that's not the problem. The problem is your reaction towards it. That's what you can control. You can't change the past. You can't control the past, but you can change and control what is bringing up the emotions that are causing you to feel this way yeah. basically so yes that's the second thing so number one breathe number two don't um, be afraid of them and number three don't dialogue with the thoughts people will obviously get these thoughts not like that they are having these thoughts of course and then scramble to find reasons of why these thoughts are not important so you might find yourself finding clever quotes to say back to your mind when a thought comes up or you know fighting with yourself this is not important why are you thinking this way this is stupid this is so illogical what's wrong with you um you know trying to just logically fight this emotional trigger that's come up for you and that's another thing not to do is don't engage in a dialogue with them don't treat them like they are important enough to warrant a response from you mm. because again that's sending a signal to the brain these thoughts are a threat. These thoughts are important enough for me to have to fight against them. So that's the third thing, guys. Don't or try to avoid dialoguing with the thoughts, trying to prove them wrong. Mm. I'd say the only time, and, and as we mentioned in the last time, the only time that you would dialogue with a thought is if you're in a happy, healthy space. Well, maybe not happy, or, but you're in a healthy space where you're actually consciously and positively going to dialogue with them uh, with the intention of changing the way you feel about them, right? If you feel low, if you feel uh, less than, if you feel low in confidence or self-esteem or you feel down in the dumps about it, it's better to not dialogue and leave them alone for a time being. Yeah. But if you're feeling good about yourself, you're feeling confident and you're ready to go and try and tackle the, the thoughts and dialogue with them in that sort of space, then maybe you can do that. Does that I make think sense? There's a very fine line between dialoguing with a thought and dialoguing with yourself about the thought. So oh, it's like yeah, yeah. Okay. if I get a thought, it's not I'm not gonna fight with a thought. 
I'm going to reassure myself. It's kind of like before when we're like, it's, it's, I'm safe, it's not a real threat. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. So I'm dialoguing with myself, telling myself that I'm okay and that my, my reality is special right now and the yes. past is, is kind of, you know... Is what it is, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a very fine line between dialoguing with the thought and dialoguing with yourself about the thought. Got you. Okay. Yeah, so that that's makes really sense. important. And then lastly, what we want to point out is that everything, even though it might not seem like it sometimes, is a projection. So the more that you are someone that's judgmental with yourself or a perfectionist or you call yourself stupid for even thinking this way, um, the way to heal and to move forward with everything in life, I believe, is self-compassion, kindness towards yourself, um, and really be, bec becoming aware of the way that you talk to yourself, how you treat yourself. You might think that you are confident or you might feel confident, but the difference between confidence and self-esteem is that confidence, you can fake it, that you can pretend that you're confident. Mm. But self-esteem is what you really believe about yourself. And so in some way, shape or form, whether it's your mind trying to protect you um, from getting hurt, so the RJ is a projection of that, or you don't believe that you're lovable enough or good enough for a relationship, so RJ is a sabotage. You know, all of these things, we, we kind of see them happen over and over again with yeah. people. And it could be both of those things, one of those things, it could be a number of things, depending on you, on your personality, on your past experiences, on your trauma, on your unconscious beliefs, on your fears, on your insecurities. Like, it all depends. But being kind and having compassion for yourself is where it really starts. Yes, admitting it's your problem, which is hard, but even that is brave, you know? Because like I've said before, it's very easy to just blame your partner and pretend that you are higher than thou and that it's their problem and you can shame and blame them and they will keep reassuring you and you can play that game for a while, but it's not gonna last. It's not lasting. It's not lasting for the relationship and it's not lasting for 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 yourself as an individual right you you may both end up um you know separate or you may both end up feeling uh less than still if you don't if you don't tackle it hey guys sorry about that the uh camera just defocused there for a moment so i'm going to do the exercise by myself so we're going to practice this it's called the learning state and it helps you go from a fight or flight state into a very very calm and relaxed state what happens with your body is you go from this panicked uh, uneasy state to a uh, parasympathetic state which really allows your body to calm down completely and what you're doing effectively is you're using your senses your focus your eyesight and you're using your breathing as well to allow yourself to really get there to to this calm place this is a place you can get to time and time again it takes practice and with practice comes mastery and with mastery comes strength and you have that strength within yourself believe in yourself you can do it so here we go if you're sitting up nice and straight imagine your spine is nice and straight take an inhale and roll your eyes up through the nose inhale exhale out the mouth keep looking at your brow take another inhale feel the eyes getting heavier exhale out your mouth Keep inhaling, look up to the brow. And next time you exhale, looking straight ahead. And then just defocus. Don't look at anything straight ahead anymore. Look at everything in your peripheral vision as well. Keep breathing in and out through your nose or in and out through the nose and mouth, whichever way you want to. Steady inhales, steady exhales. And everything in your peripheral vision now is in your focus, is in your awareness. And it's impossible for your brain to go anywhere else. You're in this moment, you're breathing. Listen to the sound of your breath. Notice everything around you in that defocused, yet fully aware state. Notice the feeling on your skin and the feeling within you. How do you feel? Notice your hearing, your sense of smell, and your sense of taste. 
If you want to, you can move your tongue around and swallow as well if you like. And just stay like this for as long as you want. Remembering to keep your awareness on your peripheral vision, you don't have to focus on one spot at all. Going back to all your senses each time. Wonderful. So I'm going to slowly bring you back on the count of three, two, one, and gently coming back. Okay, full awareness now. That is literally it. It's called the learning state and you can quickly go from fight or flight to a very calm state. Practice it. With practice comes mastery. With mastery comes strength, comes control, comes knowledge, comes everything. Okay, guys, you've got this. Take care. We'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.